In today's video, we're going to be looking at the ISDT Smart Chargers. Now, I've just recently gotten this Q6 Pro combo that comes with this parallel charging board. However, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the pros, their cons, uh, between the light version and the pro version, and if one might be actually useful to you. So before purchasing this, there's a couple things to take note of here, is that they do not take AC input, which means you cannot just plug this charger into your wall. You would have to give it some sort of a DC input, such as a battery or possibly from a laptop charger. However, the laptop charger would be slightly modified in order to have it output an XT60 to go into the input here. Now, the difference between the Q6 Lite and the Q6 Pro, first of all, I think this is the newest version of the Q6 Pro. You can immediately tell that the brightness on the screen is much, much higher. Um, it doesn't really affect that much in the field, but it is also really great to have. Now, another difference is the output power. For this one, for the light, we have 200 watts, which is around 8 amps, and 300 watts, 14 amps for the Pro. Now, some of you might be like, oh, this is so useless because it only has one port. Well, the whole idea with these is to do parallel charging on the go. For example, this is what I do here. I would set my one of my 4S batteries, any type of battery, and I could bring a parallel charging board, whether it's going to be for my big lipos or my baby lipos like this one. This is a really great parallel charging board for micro setups from your XT30s, even to your 1S HVs. And what this will also allow you to do is not only charge, also discharge and set it to storage. So storage charge will allow the battery to become on a very safe level in order to keep its overall performance without having it degrade. For example, that could be anywhere between 3.4 volts to 3.8 volts. There's a lot of theories between that, but anywhere between that you're going to be good in that perspective. Usually most batteries ship on 3.8 volts. So let's talk about some of the features here. Now, they both can charge, they both can discharge, and again, they can go to storage level. Now, the battery type is just about every battery type you would possibly want on this. You have from LiPo, lithium high volt, you have lithium ions, life, lead acid, and nickel metal hydride, which is really great. Battery voltage, this is also pretty cool, which will allow you to set your final battery voltage. Now the preset for high volt is 4.35, which is a full battery. But if you wanted to slightly overcharge, you can do that, but only do that if you know what you're doing. And if you wanted to undercharge slightly, you can also do that as well. But if you don't know what you're doing, just keep everything default. Cell count is very important here. For example, right now I'm just charging 1S LiPo, so I would set that to 1S, and then the current you set as you please. Now I'm charging my 1S HVs, it's charging right on this board. And I'll have a link to this down below, I'd highly recommend it. I did use this one in China and I just received mine yesterday. And if you wanted to charge 1S on this board, what you have to do, they do provide you with this little cable and then just bridge those two together, but you'll be able to only charge one less. So you'll be able to charge five batteries or set them in storage or even discharge them, which is really great. And not a lot of things can discharge 1S LiPos. And in this way, you'll be able to do that on the go. However, you'd still need to apply some power to the device here. Now, the Pro version here comes with this really nice fat parallel charger. Now, as you can tell, it just does four outputs. But the body of this is machined aluminium, which is pretty crazy. And this is for 8S setups. However, this is not capable of 8S, just 6S maximum. But I think they also do sell this separately. Now, this is the whole body also supposed to act as a heatsink, and it is fused inside, which is really great for safety. Now, if we take a look here, you shouldn't give it more than 40 amps input. So the output power is pretty insane, 30 amps per port. So 30 amps, 30 amps, 30 amps, 30 amps. Who would need something like that? Well, someone with a really large, large 4S battery would probably do something like that. However, if you're in the FPV market or Little Jones, uh, you're, you're, there's no way in hell you'd even get close to what this thing is rated for, which is really great. However, if you're going to be charging through just the balance ports, if you have some sort of a charger that does that, you can do that on this, but the maximum current is 2 amps, so keep that in mind. And there is no fuse on that, but what I think could happen is you could burn a trace and it acts like a fuse, one of the traces on the PCB. Keep that in mind. I don't think you'll have anything bad happen to you, but still never leave these unattended. And this is what I do here. So as you can tell now, the charge is done. And again, both of these are exactly the same. Now, I do want to show you some extra features. For example, something very important. For example, I'm charging from a 4S right now, and I do not want this to go under 14 volts because I don't want to over discharge it. So instead of just clicking once, because if you just click once here, then it'll just go into your charging menu or your discharging menu. So we'd want to exit that. You want to hold down the button and then you get into the system settings. And this is very important. Now the input power can be limited. If you don't know what that is, just leave it alone. 
and you have the input voltage. Now this should be renamed to something. This should be like low voltage alarm or low voltage cutoff, but they're calling it input voltage. Now, if you're, what you wanna set here is the lowest possible voltage you want the battery that's charging everything to be. So I want this, so full battery is 14.8 on this uh, 4S, so I want it to be around 14 volts. I don't want it to go anywhere below 14 volts because that'll even set it to, to storage level for me. So I just leave it on 14 volts. If it gets there and below, it'll start beeping and stop, which is really great. Backlight volume, completion tone, you could have it single off or just keep repeating. Language is really crazy. They actually have quite a lot of languages here, especially for Germans, French people, uh, Spanish, Italian, and possibly Chinese. I don't think that's Japanese, but I'm pretty sure that's Chinese. And then firmware sharing and all these types of things. Uh, I've never really used BatGo, so I have no knowledge into that. And then you can always also update the firmware, but you would have to buy, purchase the separate cable for that, as you can tell right here. I don't have any of those, but you could probably DIY one. You'll probably find one on RC groups if you're looking to do that. So overall, these are really great. I've actually seen a lot of people uh, use these in the field. Um, lately, I've been flying with a lot more people, which I'll have, be, I'll have more videos on later on. And most of them basically have the QX Lite or the QX Pro, and they're just charging like this. However, I do something completely different than everybody. Um, I actually just use my car's battery on a big, big uh, charger. But, but this is a really great setup if you have like a really large 6S battery or some kind of a car battery and then you just do the correct adapter and you can start charging a ton of batteries on this, which is really, really great. And it could be very useful for you on the go. For example, for me, when I have this setup, I can just, you know, start charging anything. Before, it was difficult to charge any 3Ss if I just have a backpack instead of my car, like I'm on my skateboard. Then I would just take a 5,000 milliamp 4S, this guy, and then now I could charge everything. I could either charge 1S, 2S, and 3S for my micro, such as the toothpick. So it comes in handy really well. And this is really well priced as well. And this is just like a premium setup here. And it just works really flawlessly. So if you are thinking of getting one, go ahead and get one. Um, depending on your needs, you can either get the 14 amp version or the 8 amp version. Uh, if you do need this, there's a combo that comes with this. But if you don't need this, then uh, you can go ahead and choose one without the combo. I'll have those linked down below. And let me know what you guys think. I really hope this video was useful to someone. I really hope it helped you avoid or make a purchase. And if it does, please use the links down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.